Hi, it's Charlene, and I am bringing to you today how to uh, figure how Pascal's triangle is calculated. Um, it's really a pretty standard pyramid, as you see here at the beginning. Um, at the very top of the triangle is the number one, and that makes up row zero. So the first row, which is row one, which you see the one and the one contains two ones, and they're both formed by adding the two numbers above them to the left and right. So in this case, you add a one and a zero. Now first you have to realize that everything on the outside of the triangle that you don't see represents the number zero, okay? They're just not printed there. So now what you'll do is the same uh, to create the second row. You'll add zero plus one equals one. Uh, then you'll add one plus one equals two. And then one plus zero equals one. And the row, uh, the third row is zero plus one equals one. Then you'll have one plus two equals three. Two plus one equals three and one plus zero equals one. Now in this way, the rows of triangles will go on infinitely, just go on forever and ever. Um, a number in the triangle can also be found by N, capital C, R, and that represents N choose R, where N is the number of the row and R is the element in that row. So I'd say you could maybe learn that example or process of memorization, okay? Um, so for an example, uh, to this latter part, in row three, one is the zeroth element, three is the element number one, and the next three is the second element, and the last one is the third element, okay? I've got some examples here at the end. First, what I have here at the very beginning is just the blank triangle. I don't have any examples filled in. The next example uh, that we have is how you can see the numbers kind of shifting up and to the right. So we have 1, 3, 6, and they equal 10. And so what I've done is just drawn a line, the 1, the 3, and the 6, and then it ends at the 10. Um, I think my number line kind of crosses off the numbers, so if you have to go back to the earlier slide, feel free to do so. So again, 1, 3, and 6 equals 10. So if you add them up, again, you get the number 10. Okay. Um, my next example is 1, 5, 15, 35, 70. And if you add all of those up, you'll get the number 126. Okay. Seems, I suppose, fairly easy, right? My next example, excuse my paper shuffling, I have it going behind you. Let's see, my next example is the one, I'm gonna have to look at my blank one now because my number line is drawn through, so sorry, one, three, six, 10, and that equals 20. So again, if you do the math, 10 plus six is 16, plus three is 19, plus one, that equals our 20. Okay, my last and final example is one plus six plus 21 equals 28. So again, one plus six is seven, plus 21 is again our 28. So hopefully the visual helps. I'm, I'm definitely a visual person, so I like to see examples like this. So, and again, if you remember, earlier I mentioned uh, the triangles to the left or to the right. So you can see the pattern as it comes down from the upper right-hand corner, and then there's your number, there's your total. Or it comes down from the upper left-hand corner and then there's your total. I have two examples of each, okay? So I hope that's a, a brief explanation for you how to, how to learn how to calculate Pascal's triangle, or should say how it's constructed. Um, I hope, hope you enjoy. So um, again, my name is Charlene, and I'm gonna try and bring some more math examples to you. Um, 
I, I do teach GED courses, so it's something that uh, I have gone over with my students as well. So I hope you have a great day, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Bye.